Saudi opposition to the deal was never really primarily about the possibility of Iran someday maybe getting a nuclear weapon. What they were really worried about, and continue to be worried about, is the fact that Saudi Arabia sees in Iran a regional competitor for basic issues of power, control of oil, economic power, and crucially, military power. U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter met with the Saudi royal family and discussed the deal. And at that point, you know, this is in late July, uh, the Saudi royal family changed their position and King Salman now says he supports the deal. This is what some Saudi analysts have claimed. In their view, the nuclear deal may in fact weaken the Iranian regime. They see it as a way of opening Iran to Western influences into, into the international community in a way of introducing democratizing elements and things like that. Presumably what happened there is that there was some kind of an agreement that whatever shifts may occur in the future between the U.S. and Iran, the U.S. would continue sending billions of dollars worth of weapons uh, to Saudi Arabia, would continue to act as a guarantor of the Saudi state. You know, three years ago, that Saudi Arabia led a region-wide arms deal with the U.S. of $60 billion. It was the biggest arms deal in the history of the world. There had never been one anything close to that. And I think that there were probably guarantees made when Ashton Carter was there to visit the Secretary of Defense that those deals would continue. We also, also should keep in mind that Saudi Arabia is engaged in an ongoing military campaign in Yemen that the United States is backing. If it weren't for Washington's support, uh, Saudi Arabia would not be able to carry out the military campaign the way it is right now. And I think Saudi Arabia, for all of its reservations about the nuclear agreement, they really wanted to play the good ally and not do what the Israeli government did and officially oppose the agreement. So we might see um, Saudi Arabia pursue these proxy wars in the region more aggressively. And um, of course, there are some grave risks to that as the continuation of the crises in Syria and Yemen uh, helps out groups like Daesh and Al Qaeda more than anyone else. And I think um, this kind of reaction on the part of Saudi Arabia entails much risk for the region.